it's pretty neat when you had a trouble valve on a property causing all of that brown grass behind you and you and your son find the valve together awesome work bud you can see he's got the poker in his hand because we were poking around looking for it we referenced the blueprints on this property it said it would be generally in this area actually it said it would be on the other side of that palm tree right there we found it so good news we got the valve the customer will be happy about this we're going to pull the tracker out of the truck connect it to that red wire down there so that we can go over to the controller at the end of our wet check and see what zone number that is. We also gotta fix some, are we gonna fix some of them? Cause some of them are not working. This zone has never been turned on before. So yeah, yeah. there's a bunch of broken stuff on it. We'll flag all of that when we figure out what zone number this is supposed to be. So let's go grab the tracker off the truck and then connect it to this red wire. And then we'll go over to the controller and see what zone number this is supposed to be. I don't like losing things after I find them. So we're gonna put a marking stake right here next to the valve so it can't be lost again. There you go, that sucker isn't going anywhere now. We'll be able to find that valve in the future easily with the white pipe sticking up out of the ground. All right, now let's get our tracker on this. Ooh, you all right? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to flip it. Yeah, and then I knocked it out of your hands. All right, we'll get the tracker set up on that red wire over there so we can figure out what zone number this is next. So you were just saying what? We used this last time, like a while ago, at a different place that we worked on, so. So you're familiar with this tool? Yeah. All right, well, we won't need that end of the, the tool for what we're doing today. You can leave that here. We just need the power coming from this so we can detect it on the other end using another tool. Is this the newer version? It is the pro version. That's been in there the whole time. We're going to go ahead and put direct clip on, and it looks like we got good power here, so go ahead and close the door. This? Yep, grab that mallet. No, don't lock it. You're good there. Just leave it. Leave it. Leave it alone. Grab the mallet, and let's go to the truck and, and go to the controller. Looks like uh, my B program is watering right now. I was over here trying to find that wire with this. I had him flag out a break that we saw over there. And as I'm trying to figure out the wire, he found another break over here all on his own. Yeah, it's, it's like right here. I, can, I feel like I can feel it right here. Yep. There's, prob there's definitely a pipe there because there's a sprinkler head in the yeah, bushes feel, right there. I feel the pipe. I feel the pipe. Perfect. Thank you for flagging that. Now, when we come over here, I already did all the detective work to find out that that's the wire we need. So the tracker is connected over by the valve to this wire and it wasn't connected to anything in this junction box. So that means it's not making it back to the controller over there. So the next thing we need to do, do you want to guess? Flag it? No, not flag it. Since we know the, the wire going from the valve over there to this point, the next thing we need to figure out is a good wire from the controller to this point and then once we figure out that we connect those two wires together and we have a valve that works so what we need to do next is we need to go grab the tracker from where we have it over there reconnect that valve the way we found it come over to the controller with the tracker and then hook it up at the controller to tell us which one of these wires we can use so let's go get the tracker from the, the valve you can bring those flags with us you flagged out what you needed to flag out look at him looking for more breaks he's on the hunt all right, now let me show you how to safely disconnect this. Do not touch any of the wires. Open that up first. Almost touched that. Now, click the button that says done. You're there. That one says no. The other one says done. This one? You see done? Oh. All right. Okay, now, the, the, the tracker's not putting out any voltage. If you want to be absolutely sure that it's not, hit the white button. Now you saw the screen disappeared. It is off. So the power is off. So now you can disconnect those wires. Take this off? Yep, take it off. And then you can take that one off as well. And then you're gonna to wanna to coil those wires up nice and clean with each other so you can stick them in where the uh, headphones are. And then don't forget the ground stake. So many irrigation technicians leave that damn thing behind. That's one of the most important parts. Well, I mean, you could use a screwdriver, but that thing gets lost a lot. So try not to lose it. Otherwise we're gonna get stuck using the screwdriver again. Thankfully Armada sent me a new one when I had this thing serviced the last time. Side note, I know that I'm going to get a lot of comments about how I'm not using my Tempo 521E out in the field, and that's because Christian has it. He's out using it in West Palm Beach for the last week or so, so he's been out there using it. He fell in love with the tracker, and he's been having a lot of success with it, so I'm not going to stop him from using it in the field. I get by with the Armada 900 that you see me and Justin using. Justin definitely wanted to use the Tempo tracker. He was excited to use the Tempo tools today, so just wanted to add that note. All right onto the video all right so before we can actually go and connect the rest of the wires we want to make sure the solenoid here works so we're going to use our station master pro here to test that solenoid so go ahead and connect to the black wires down there that are going to the solenoid 
Good job, you're using the teeth there. That's gonna hold the wire a lot better. All right, beautiful, you got it connected. So now you're gonna come over here and you're gonna switch this switch to activate solenoid, so all the way to the left. Yeah, well, you're gonna switch this switch at the top. You see that little switch right there? This one? Right here. This one? In the middle there. Switch it over to the side. Well, guess what? That solenoid is no good. So even if we were to fix this wire, we'd have been driving ourselves nuts because that solenoid doesn't even work. So we'll go ahead and swap out this solenoid before we go and fix the wire because if we fix the wire, it ain't gonna make much of a difference if the solenoid doesn't yeah. work. So I'm glad we tested that before we went through and tried to fix the, uh, the wire because then we would have been like, hey man, we thought we fixed it and it wasn't fixed. That's why you gotta test everything. This tests the solenoid for us and we now know the solenoid's no good. All right, let's go ahead and put a new solenoid in there so we can go fix the wire and get this zone working because they need it. Look at that. The rest of the zone, beautiful. This area, garbage. Kind of, kind of bad, yeah. Yeah, we need to get this that. this never worked. It didn't work, so we're gonna get it working now. We just gotta put a new solenoid in there and get that wire connected to the controller over there. So let me go find a solenoid on my truck. All right, so first things first, we're gonna reach down in here, get the camera in here so you can see this. This is the flow control handle. We're gonna close the flow control handle on this valve before we attempt to take the solenoid out. And even before I attempt to take the solenoid out, I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time getting some of this dirt out of here because I don't want any of the dirt to get into the solenoid port. So, yeah, that would be bad. Yeah, so go ahead and pause the video for a little bit while I clean this out. All right, this is actually, why don't you go ahead and stand up there so you can film in this direction because the solenoid, annoyingly, is not in a spot where I'm gonna be able to get to it easily. So I closed the valve because I'm gonna go open the solenoid and the zone's gonna wanna turn on. And water's gonna wanna come out of here. So watch out, water's gonna come spraying out of here. It might. Nope, it's not spraying out. Good. But you can see it. Because we have the flow control there. closed. And now I gotta yeah. carefully screw the solenoid in in a very difficult to reach area. But with a lot of experience and patience, this is totally doable. And the new solenoid is in. We can open up the flow control to the valve so that when we go to test the solenoid, it'll open the valve. Yeah. Now we're gonna run the same test. You can keep that going. Show everybody how, when we do the test, when it works. All right, we got the two wires connected now. And then when we turn this on, we should see the green light light up for good and we should see the zone come on. Bingo. And that'll shut. There we go. So now we're cooking with fire because we've got a solenoid that works. We're gonna go ahead and get it connected to these wires here. We're gonna put some new wire nuts on it and then we're gonna go find that wire out at the other end. Cut. So the next step in this process is actually going to involve some two-person troubleshooting and the second person is going to be Justin sitting at the controller moving the, the wire around over here to different um, unused wires so we can detect the wire that we're going to use to power up that valve we just found over there and we just replaced the solenoid on. So he's going to start with this wire here. I'm going to call him and he's going to switch it from that wire to the next wire until I find a wire that works from here to the junction box on the other side over there. So he's gonna wait for me to give him a call. Perfect, it was the green wire marked 17 and this is the wire that we needed. I'm gonna go ahead and pack all these wires back into the box the way I found it. And then go wire zone number 17 up to the controller over there, check to make sure it works. And then, well, it might not be zone seven. Actually, it will be zone 17 because that'll be the last uh, zone on the controller. So, and then we can go ahead and check that zone and give the customer a price on all the things we found broken on it. All right, let's go connect this thing. So go 17. ahead and take, yep, 17. It's the second to last screw. See, there's C, 17, you're unscrewing 18. Go to 17. Is it loose already? It looks like it is, yeah. So it's already loose, leave it alone. Go ahead and take that wire that you discovered. This one? Yep, and put it under that screw. I'll see if you can figure it out. If you can, I'll show you. you what you want to do is stick the tip of this wire underneath that screw like you see all of these oh whoops oh no there's one it's got to go underneath the screw a little bit further back here i'll help you out do you see that little look where the tip of the wire is you see that little like square oh! it has to go behind that square this? and then sometimes it makes it easy well i think you're behind there now hold the wire with one hand and screw the screw with the other hand it's usually oh, easier yeah, then it's, it's easier if you do it the other way left hand with the wire right hand with the screwdriver here I go. I'm filming so terribly here. Put in this one? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, hold on, I don't think you got the wire all the way under there. Let me see the wire real quick. So here's a trick. How about you putting the wire off the screw? That's fine. See how I bent the wire to make it a little yeah. bit easier? Go ahead and, there you go. There, there. Now you go ahead and tighten that sucker up. Keep going until you can't tighten no more. There you go. You just connected the missing zone. So we'll go ahead and neatly, oh, yes, it was. Okay. So we're gonna find out now 